eleven. Start at the back. I lay at the back of the nine eleven. I was just there. They told me they said, Take cardigan. I said, For what? Nothing. Take this one. Nothing. Take this one. Cover up. It's going to get cold as we're out of this place. Nothing. They say, As we're passing through Kogi, we are getting so wet. We get cold. I said, Nothing. Nothing. I unbutton my shirt. I lay down on, 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 on the back of the, the bags of rice and everything. When I entered the place called Zuba, from the thing I felt in my body, I just knew it was Zuba. Because the way, <laughs> the way something <laughs> entered my body, I felt Zuba. Zuba. <laughs> As we enter the place, I just felt I knew this was not the anointing at all. My hand became stiff. Every year became stiff. I was shaking. They said, if you go, I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, why are you shaking? I said, I'm dying. <laughs> but there was this excitement and this joy. Joy. But today is not anymore. No more joy of salvation. Am I communicating? When people used to love God, there are things you don't tell people to do. The Holy Spirit in, in, of God in them. You see a general in the army. You see an accountant sweeping. You see a lady well dressed. Nobody tells her how to dress. I want to ask you a question. That was the Holy Ghost, right? That was the Holy Ghost. Has that God changed now? Has that God changed now? So why are we now changed? No more joy. That's why little thing you are discouraged. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, it's not your problem that is big, it's your strength that is small. Joy of salvation. Joy of salvation. Not because you are expecting prosperity. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If only in this life we have hope, we have all men most miserable. No joy of salvation. All that is keeping you is promise of prosperity, promise of wealth, not knowing that no matter what you have. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11. As Patrick seated on eggs and nature did not, so is he that get riches not by right. He shall leave them at the midst of his years, and at the end he shall be a fool. Proverbs 20 21. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning. He said, may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Even if God blesses you, that blessing can kill you if you don't have the joy of salvation. Proverbs 1 32. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Proverbs 1, verse 32. Am I communicating? The joy! Somebody is going home and he knows he has nowhere to sleep. He will stay in church. He will serve his God. You see him bouncing. I thought this brother is going through something. No, there is this inner joy that the Holy Ghost gives. I remember one time I was living at the, at the park. It was a four flats. I was on one flat on the side. Another flat, there was a young man there. And the down, down flat, they were students because they, they partitioned the house. Robbers were robbing. They robbed the flat down. And they said, where is that apostle? Where is his own apartment? And somebody ran. Because there was no light. The front door was open. My wife was sleeping. The children were sleeping. I was just lying on the pallet, the sitting room. The front door was open. And they ran to me. Close the door, close the door. They're asking for your apartment. I, he woke me up from sleep. I said, what's the matter? He said, thieves, thieves, thieves. They're asking for your apartment. I said, where are they? See, they are downstairs. They are coming up. They are coming up. He said that. He took off. I went back and I lay down and slept. The door was still open. I just lay down and slept. The door was open. It was later in the morning. After I prayed, I woke up 3 to 5 to pray. After I prayed in the morning, I called the guy. I said, hey, what were you telling me? That time. He said, sir, are you alright? I said, I don't know. What were you telling me? He said, there were robbers downstairs. They were coming upstairs. You, you, you didn't lock the door. I said, no. I, went, I just laid down back on the chair. Because I didn't understand what you were saying. You know what? As you were saying that, there was this peace that I had inside of me. I just knew you cannot climb. You can't come to this door. It's not possible. Am I talking to somebody here? There was this peace I had. I didn't go, oh Lord, oh Lord, lock the door. But today, you see a believer lie under the bed. We we'll lie under the bed. Because our, our, our faith in God is now shaken. You may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. No joy! 
that you are saved. You haven't come into church. They say, where are you going? Are they come? Where are you going? Are they come? I'm, I'm coming. Let me just dash somewhere. There's no joy. They ask you, ah, this is a bottle of drink. Take. Mm, I'm not in the... You can't even say, because I'm a Christian, I'm not doing this. No. You are trying to be correct. You are trying to sound politically right. You are trying to make them feel that you are not, uh, what do they call it? A Jew man. You are trying to make them feel that uh, you, 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 are, you are what's up. You are a what's up person. You say, how can I say I don't drink? How can I say I don't drink? So I have to act like somebody who belongs. You say, really? Uh, uh, that, that one, turn the drink. Oh, that's not my brand. My brand. Deep down your heart, you are trying to avoid alcohol. But you can't come out and say, no, I'm a believer. In fact, for them to offer you a drink, it means they don't even know who you are. Imagine you with your protocol uniform from church. Protocol uniform. You are going now, somebody is smoking. You go take. <laughs> with your protocol uniform. Yeah. Just drag, drag, drag one. Only one that drag one. You know what drag this thing? Hey, that's a day or so. Eh? I know they will check you. I don't they lorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't climb. Shall they see? So we are different here like this. Now, shall they max script, max script, max script? I give everybody A, A, A. I don't like you. I just give you F in the max script. But someone, someone says, no, I'm a child of God. I don't do that. Many times I've been in the plane and I'll pray and someone turns to me and says, yeah, are you one of those church people? I say, no, I'm a child of God. No, no, don't try. Don't try. Don't try to want to fit in. You are not totally declaring for, for God, but you're also not trying to make them feel, I'm a born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I don't do that. I'm a child of God. There are people that will compromise their faith. One time we were on the plane. And you know, there are some people that are just demons. They are planted everywhere. Satan has ushers everywhere. Walk to you in the plane and they say, Sir, I'll, you want alcohol? You say, No. They will go. That's big bottle. Sit down. Big bottle. They will not bring small bottle. It's not the same content. You brought big bottle of alcohol. I don't want. They come back. In the plane. Small, but what about this? I'm a Christian. I don't take this. Oh, church. Okay, church. Church. They'll bring another one. This one is 4% alcohol. They say you, they say you come. 4% alcohol. You say, no, I don't take this. Oh, I know what he wants. <laughs> and I remember one, one bishop that was with me. Lord have mercy. The guy they just brought like this, but they passed through me. He said, "Bring apostle so on." The guy bah, bottle like this. Ah, he dropped the bottle. I was looking at this guy with bishop cap. I said, ah, I said "Bishop." They brought another one. Ah, I said, "Bishop, yeah, I drunk I do. He said, "No, no, 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 no." You know, for the stomach sake, for the stomach. And they will look for a scripture that will just keep you quiet, that will shut you up. Take little alcohol for thy stomach sake. As what is wrong with your stomach, Bishop? What is wrong with your stomach? Let's be believers. Let's take our stand as Christians. Why are people not excited in the midst of praise and worship? You will see somebody on the altar. She's leading praise. He's leading praise. They spend extra energy. They shout hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? They are doing everything to charge you. Somewhere you are sitting down. Shout hallelujah. Is this guy mad? You have, you have said shout hallelujah three times. I'm not shouting. Sing if you want to sing and get out of that place. You are angry. You brought anger to church. Shout hallelujah. Shout turn around. Turn around. You are looking at him with one corner eye. Turn around. You are looking at say this guy. Your head. Your head. Your head. Your head. Why, why is it that this guy always like to show himself? He like to show himself. Can't they just sing and just go? I'll be looking at him. Oh. I'll be looking at him. This kind of people. No. All of the anger and the animosity because because of landlord announced rent you brought it to church you are angry at the usher to make matters worse your the, the man of god now come and say rejoice rejoice no matter what is happening why would you say rejoice you get your house now you get your house now why would you say rejoice you have a car why would you say i beg you rejoice what rejoice what why will i rejoice rejoice fire it's okay 
He said to you, the man of God says, if you are not rejoicing, something is wrong. You've got to rejoice. You've got to uh, rejoice what? God check the heart. Is the heart. Is the heart. Is the heart. Is the heart. Whether I laugh or not, is the heart. Satan is giving you scripture. Imagine, Satan has conducted Bible study for you. Giving you scriptures to make you remain the way you are. You have brought aggression. But there is somebody, the landlord said, by this time tomorrow, you are out of my house. He said, no problem. He's going to church. He says, my eyes are looking up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from God. Who made the heavens and the earth? He said, No, the sea be moved. He said, You may not see the wind, you may not see the rain, but this valley shall be full of water. I have joy in God. Call Sabahash. Though war rise against me, my heart shall not fear. Don't men rise up against me. This will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Even if the world is against me, I know He is with me. For if God be with you, there's a joy in my heart that wells up in my heart. That no matter the battle, what is around cannot control what is within. It is what is within that controls what is around. That's why a few of us are not bothered. We don't lose sleep. Am I talking to somebody? When the battle goes tougher, we go younger. Am I speaking here? We don't lose sleep. Why? Not because we are arrogant. Not because of bravado. But there's a knowledge of what we have. That there is a God inside of us. Somebody say joy of salvation. I'm wasting your time. Joy of salvation. Nothing sponsors the joy of salvation like your addiction to the word of God. I'm still talking of the joy of salvation. When you are joy of salvation drives you. Whenever you carry the Bible, you know, oh Laboko Sibra. I remember the days of the late Benson Dahosa when I, the Archbishop just come to the altar. He wants to minister. I just start smiling. I take my pen. I want to hear what God is saying. I want to hear there's this excitement. I want to hear what God is saying. My friends are now. Papa says something will stand. You see people there. Wait till he talk. What did he say now? Why are you stand? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. What did he say now? Anything he says, we stand up. We are excited. That joy. It propels us into the word of God. It propels us into scripture. The Bible says in Job chapter 23 verse 12. I have esteemed thy word than my necessary food. The word of God is of more value to me than my food. Than the food that I eat is of more value. I have esteemed thy word than my necessary food. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. The grass may wither. The flower may fade. But the word of God abide forever. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of God dwell richly in all wisdom. Am I talking to somebody? the word of God is powerful the word of God is at that addiction Hebrews 4 verse 12 the Bible says quick and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit of the joints and marrows and it says the son of the thought and intense hey maso pele Sometimes mama just walks to me and she sees me. I'm smiling. I'm so say, say, hey, you have seen something in the Bible. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. I just got a revelation. I got it. Sometimes I'm sharing some with her. She hold her head. He said, How did you find that? I said, I was just studying. The Holy Spirit just breathed into it. Hey! At that period, if you ask me for anything, I'll give you. At that period, anything you ask me for. Anything you ask me for. Anything. At that point, anything. I'm just excited because you can't pay for that revelation. The word of God increases your fuel for service. The word of God increases your gas for service. So what, what empowers the joy of salvation? Your addiction to the word of God. Your addiction to the word of God. Am I talking to somebody? There is this peace that comes with knowing God, knowing that God is with you. Not in force your, your joy of salvation like your hope of eternal life. Your hope of eternal life. You know that after this life, there's another life. We will all will go and rest. We all will leave this world and go and rest. Whether you like it or not, you will go. If you like, say God forbid, it doesn't matter. One day when it's time, you will go. The hope for eternal life. First John chapter 3 verse 3. He that had this hope purified himself even as he is pure. The, it, it, that joy when you know that someday you are going to see him face to face. Those who are prepared are not afraid. Those who are not prepared are afraid. 
those who are prepared are just they know that one day they're going to just stand before the king if are those who are dead now and they died in Christ they are having a, they are in a better place than you better place they're just with the Lord worshipping him Say, so, there's this hope whatever you are I want you to build up that hope he that has this hope in him purified himself when you have that hope of eternal life for what shall he profit a man if he gained the whole world you didn't understand that scripture he didn't say if he has the whole world he said if he what gain for you to gain you must have capital is that true you must have gain is profit is that true so the bible says what shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world if the whole world is given to him as a gain for the world to be given to him as a gain it means there's something bigger than the world that he's gaining he said, and yet if he has that and loses his soul what has he gotten many of us don't believe there's anything called heaven we don't believe there's anything called heaven say brother there's heaven hey! I'll be hearing it heaven is real hey stop it they said that in my grandfather's time my grandfather is dead where is the heaven that's a problem if Jesus does not come you may go for any man who is gone to him Jesus has come can I repeat that for every man who is gone to him Jesus has come and there's something so definite if you miss heaven you can't miss hell some of you think everything is ending here you think everything is ending here you think life is ending here so you can spend anything here someone said to me why do you spend more on people than yourself I said because I'm leaving everything here and when I stand before the Lord what the Lord will reward me for is what I did for people not what I did for myself so if money enters man now I'm thinking of who to help I'm thinking of what to do I'm thinking of who to give Am I talking to somebody here? You see what people do today with money. Somebody wants to build a house. Not church. Build a house. The house will curve. You will now do one curve again. Another curve. Now to underground. Down on that ground we have another underground. We we'll now have a tunnel. We we'll now have one garden. We we'll now have one volleyball court. We we'll now have one but Eh? You won't leave this world. you're wondering one day i was driving to my house i just looked at my house my wife was not around i was looking at my house like this i said wait here wait here wait here, wait here they think this is too big i said this woman allow me i'll just build two bedroom flat she and the children one me and the other children one We enjoy our life quietly because we're leaving these things behind. Just imagine that the trumpet just sound, boom, Antichrist, enter your house. <laughs> All the labor you labor, Antichrist, the cousin, Antichrist, cousin, the Antichrist, cousin from Ibn Affair, occupy one house. The other Antichrist, cousin from Worry, enter the other place. So your house is occupied. Imagine you are, in, you are, you are on your way to heaven, bam, as you are being raptured, you look down. Antichrist is driving your Jeep. <laughs> And the grass is driving your jeep. Some of you now you spent one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand on both streets, and there's something about rapture. I can tell you very well that if the trumpet sound, you are not going with your wig. I can tell you. I can tell you. I can tell you. You are not going. Just imagine trumpet just sound. Boom! Your wig just fall off. As it's falling off, you are going and the cry just pick it and he's hearing it. Two fifty gone. Two fifty. Two fifty. 50k gone 300,000 gone carry that money and give it the widow give that money to widows give that money to orphans carry that money use it for the house of God and when it comes to vanity women are, women are more guilty of it more guilty how can somebody settle down and make up 
and in the night you will clean it what kind of problem is that you make up with your hand make up and at night you sit there again and start are you not tr in trouble sleep with it sleep with it wake up with it don't bath keep it for three days something you labored for how can you waste your labor like that you spend one hour to make up you now clean it for what if me i was a woman i make up for two hours one month how can i make up for one month god is not a waster <laughs> oh lord but there is heaven heaven is real this world is not our final resting place there's a place where there will be peace unending prepare for it whether you are 70 years then 80 years on it doesn't matter the year you get to prepare for it there's nothing in this life nothing no matter how you go you come down look at a man a man is born as a child he becomes a, a teenager he becomes a youth he becomes an adult he becomes elderly he becomes old and as he becomes old he returns back to a child am i saying the truth that's how people are holding his hand again like they held him when he was a child it's like academics you study and study and study you get a degree get a master's get a phd become a professor become an emeritus and after that you go back to what they call maybe an esquire you now return back to what they call mister 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 you read to a, school, a level you cross professorship cross esquire you now return back to mister so you finish the level you come back again to mister you see a man who's a professor he has read he has come now emeritus and the now say from emeritus he goes back to mister it's mister that's what life is you come back again a man goes high when he dies they bring him down and they bury him a multi-billionaire one time at uh, 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 see, that was a barrier i attended and i just hated life i was looking at this man so rich so blessed i saw people some people dragging his body i looked at the vanity of life and they dropped him somewhere while he was alive you can't come several feet to him they just drop him somewhere and i'm like wow many of his friends were not even in the barrier I lost a friend of mine one time and I shed tears in that barrier. I preached in the barrier. I was going to my car. I was weeping and weeping. I said, I wasn't weeping because this, I know this guy is in heaven. When I looked at his corpse, he died with a smile. I know he's in heaven. But what shocked me was the best friends were not with us in the barrier. They were not there. They were calling me. How was it? How was it? Hey, sorry, I couldn't come. What? And while this guy was alive, he meant a lot to them. He survived many of them. There's nothing in this world. There's nothing in this world. Am I communicating? Stay in power. The joy of salvation. The second thing that helps a believer. Am I wasting your time? The second thing that helps a believer that gives him staying power is his walk with the Holy Spirit. His walk with the Holy Spirit. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit helps, empowers you. Gives you staying power. It helps you to stay with God and you don't feel a thing. No matter the shaking, you are not bothered because you are walking with the Holy Ghost. No one that the psalmist said, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit. Psalm 51 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the communicator, is the revealer, is the unveiler of God's presence. If you want to continually enjoy God's presence, you want to permanently bring God's presence on the scene, you must be a man who walks with the Holy Spirit. When you are walking with the Holy Ghost, you don't, you don't, you are not, you are not bankrupt of the presence. Walking with the Holy Ghost makes you buoyant. God is benevolent with His presence for everyone who walks with His Spirit. I say that again. God is benevolent of His presence to everyone. Who walks with his spirit as you walk with the spirit of god you communicate the presence of god when a man who walks with the holy ghost stands you feel literal presence it's walking with the holy ghost of god who is the holy spirit john 16 13 the holy spirit is a person jesus said when he the holy spirit is come when he 
H he when he outbeats when he you only use the word he for a person the Holy Ghost is a personality the Holy Ghost is a person child of God the Holy Ghost is a person the Holy Ghost is a person but the Holy Ghost is not a human being but it's a person there's a difference between human being and person in biology we are told that the human skeleton has how many bones two oh two or six that's what they said that's the, the human anatomy am i correct 206 that is human being what makes you a person is inside knowledge will emotion that's what makes you a person and the holy ghost has these three Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed with the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit has a feeling. He has feeling. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, that God gives, the Spirit of God gives to every man as he wills. So the Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 verse 27, who knoweth the mind of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has a mind. He has a will he has a feeling he has a mind so that makes him a person so you can relate to the holy spirit you can be in your room and say holy spirit i know you are here holy spirit i need more of you in my life you talk to him he talks back to you you walk into the church as you go on your knees you say holy spirit i acknowledge your presence as you come to the altar to take a song holy spirit we acknowledge that you are here he's a person and every personality likes communication one of the strengths of personality is communication you must always communicate you must talk to the holy ghost and he'll talk back to you when you have the holy spirit he gives you staying power the highest realm of work with god is not of work with the holy spirit is not revelation the highest realm of work with the holy spirit is not miracles the highest realm of work with the holy spirit is not provision the highest realm of work with the holy spirit is comfort that's why it's not called the miracle worker. It's not called the provider. It's not called the deliverer. It's called the comforter. There are times in your life you go through certain things. Only he can tell you it is well. Nobody. Because they don't feel what you feel. But he understands. And when you are going through that shaking, that pain, you are going through that trouble, it just gives you a song in your spirit. When peace like a river I turn that my way when trouble at seas billows roll, it's plain in your spirit. Whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's hitting your spirit. When peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows like seas billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to sing, it is well, it is well with my soul. Take your seat. It helps you to stay. How do I walk with the Holy Spirit? Be sensitive to his leading. Be sensitive to his leading. Be very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How do I walk with the Holy Spirit? Daily acknowledge him. Daily. Daily. But as you wake up in the morning, that's the first thing. Those of you outside, can you hear me? Outside, can you hear me? Don't worry. Very soon we move back to the other place for our Bible study. But then as you wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit, I love you. You acknowledge the Holy Spirit every day. You wake up in the morning, you acknowledge him. You are going to bed, he's the first man you talk to and the last man you talk to. You wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit, I do that all the time. Holy Spirit, I love you. And if you are, if you are a committed member here, yeah, you will know I do that all the time in church. Acknowledge it, the Holy Spirit. Acknowledging, acknowledging him. When I wake up sometime in the morning, I just acknowledge him. Holy Spirit, be my comfort. Blessed Spirit, 
Lead me on As I'm passing along the way The road is so now Holy Spirit Lead me It's the first man The first person you talk to And the last person You are going back to bed Right there as you are laying down with your head on the pillow Holy Spirit I love you Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are special to me. Thank you for the day. Thank you for my going out. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. Oh, Kaparisos, Teremonta Kalia, Brakiso Prahade. Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you. I love you. I ask, Lord, that wake me up to pray. Wake me, Holy Spirit, to pray. Wake me to study your word. Wake me to pray. Holy Spirit, in the midst of that, phew, no, how can you finish talking to the Holy Spirit? You now dream that you are eating the dream. How can you finish that kind of fellowship? You now dream that they are chasing you. The love of the Holy Spirit. When you are walking with Him, there is this confidence. When anything is happening around me, the first thing I do is to contact Him. I say, what's going on? How will this end? He said, relax. This and this will happen, but this will happen, but don't worry. This is the end of it. When I see that end, whatever is happening between, I don't talk, I'll just be quiet. It's that end. I've seen that end. I've seen that end. I do that all the time. I go to him. I just ask him, Spirit of God, what is this? What is this? And he says, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. This is the, the end. So focus on the end. And that's it. That, that, that's the benefit of walking with him. Boldness, confidence, no fear. Some of you are so fearful. You see a grown up lady, grown up, she can't stay alone in darkness. 25 years old. The light goes apart. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, never, 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 never. Hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. Some people say they have phobia for flight. I remember one time we were flying. <laughs> the plane just got bra. A married woman grabbed him out. Whoa! The, old, the wife slapped her hand. Bah! Leave my husband. He said, sorry, 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 sorry. I can't stand flight. Why did, why did you enter the plane? We are we going to crawl? When you entered the plane, you didn't know we would fly. Grab the, 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 the man. The wife hit the hand. Leave my husband. He said, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have phobia for flight. I have phobia for flight grown up woman there are some of you like that I don't like cockroach I have phobia for cockroach 27 years old you have phobia for cockroach when some people like you your, your, your mates are in the village using their hand to cast snake oh you've not seen you've not seen village people they will see snake. Snake will set. They will set. <laughs> snake will set. They will set. Tazan. <laughs> eh? Yes. Serious fear when they are passing through a dark spot. Dark spot at night. Move on, move on, don't be tired. My savior understand. He's a move on, move on. Grown up. There are some of you looking at me now. You can't stay in the house alone. At your age. You need the Holy Spirit. When he's dead, there's this confidence. There's this boldness he gives you. You can, you can run through a troop. You can leap over a wall. Because he's dead inside of you. He's dead inside of you. He's dead inside of you. One time there was, a, there was something that happened in the parts of the country. And I was having a crusade and they told me not to come there. If I love myself. So we had a meeting in my house in Benin then. A senior pastors came and decided to talk to me on the reason why I should not go there. I said, why? 
So look at what was said. Sometimes wisdom is important. I said, but why did you put the date of the crusade? See, wisdom is very, very important. We can always. I said, give me the key. I told my driver, enter another car. I said, I'll be in front. Put the escort behind. I'll be driving. See, they said they are waiting for you on the way. I said, let's go. It's only a coward that dies many times before they are dead. Let's go. We went there. We preached the gospel. I was asking what's going on. It's like when we went to Sokoto <laughs> some years ago. It was the heat of Boko Haram. And I was ministering. And the Lord said to me, curse Boko Haram in Sokoto. Thousands of people. And I said, I called their name and I said, I curse you. I curse your power in this knot. I curse. When I was busy cursing, I turned. The altar was empty. Nobody was on the altar. All the guys that went with me were in the crowd. That's what happened. They say we were taking care of things. <laughs> as well as that, I said, Ah, sir, waiting. You are now with you. You cost them. We stand with you. You came to their house. You saw people wearing the overall. They, they, you were, they were looking at you, frowning their face. You are still cursing them. So no problem. You are the one God called. We are behind you. Now I'm not telling you arrogance. But I'm telling you, when some of these things, we do these things, when later we, we, we ask ourselves, hey! One of the reasons I don't like watching myself, I don't like watching myself because if I watch myself, I see all the errors. I'm telling you, I'm walking to somebody. I say, you stand up. When I'm watching myself, I say, hey, 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 where is he going? Where is he going? Where is he going? You walk to somebody, stand up. I say, hey, hey, why am I telling this guy to stand up now? What do I want to say? The next thing I prophesy, I say, Jesus, I'm, I'm panicking. It has happened already. Oh. I'm panicking. Hey, 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 what did I tell him? Is he correct? The guy says, he's correct. Hey, he's correct. He's correct. After a while, I say, I'm not watching myself. I don't want high blood pressure. <laughs> but it's the Holy Ghost that enters us. At those times, he enters into us. So sometimes I prophesy on people. They come to me at the end of the service. Papa, I'm the one you were talking to. I'm looking at them. I can't remember. You told me this. I said, eh. Hey. What did I say again? Oh, oh okay. Uh, all right. I can't remember anything. I've forgotten. I remember my message. I remember the healings. But I can't remember. What is working with us then? Philippians 2.13 is God that walketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. First Thessalonians 5.24 Faithful is he that call it. Who also we do it? The same power of a believer is his work with the Holy Spirit. I give you number three and then we'll pray. If you want to stay as a believer, you need discernment against rebels in the faith. You need discernment against rebels. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11 14. For Satan appears as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. The Bible says in Jude 1 4 that certain men have crept in unawares. Thessalonians 3 verse 6 says they creep into houses. Second Thessalonians 3 2. He said, God would, that God delivers you from wicked and unreasonable men. For not men, not all men are fit. Rebels! If you are busy pursuing Jesus, pursuing God, listen to me, everybody. If you are busy pursuing Jesus, pursuing God, loving God genuinely. If you don't have discernment of spirit, there are people you will meet. By meeting them, your own mentality about God will change. Your love for God will die. Your mindset towards church will die. The way you see ministers of God will change. Your approach to God, those are rebels in the faith. They will affect your mind. You came to church ready to serve God. But by meeting these people, they have spoiled your mind. They have made you feel that whatever you are doing for God is a waste. You came with fire, but now you are faulting almost everything you see. Because of their attitudes. These are rebels. They have been in every system. I'll give you five, five or six types of those kind of rebels. There is the Judas generation. The Judas generation are those that will betray you for anything. If you like, give them the world. The Judas generation is the greedy generation. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 12, if you read verse 6, the Bible says Judas was a thief. If you read verse 4 and 5, the Bible says he was the one that kept the purse. Why did God give Judas the purse? Why did Jesus give Judas the purse knowing he was a thief? Yet he was the treasurer. He had the opportunity to steal as much as he wanted to steal. But he was not satisfied until he stole Christ. 
the Judah generation are the greedy generation. They want everything. When you meet them in church, they want position. If, it's their, if they are not the leader, they will make the leader uncomfortable. They will poison your mind against the leaders. Because they are greedy. Why not them? Why not them? It has to be them. Why not them? Why not them? Why not them? They just feel too much. Then there is the Demas generation. The Judas generation, you see them in Matthew 26 from verse 14 to 16. The Demas generation are those that when they, when they see hardship, Demas was somebody following Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10, he said, Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world. The Demas generation are those that they will see them praising God, loving God, loving God. One little shaking. You are surprised. Is this the person that was loving the Lord? The Demas generation are those who compromise. Demas was following Paul. Until Demas saw an opportunity to go and get a job. And he got admission to the University of Thessalonica. And he went there from there. He left. Paul thought he was following him because he loved him. Not knowing that Demas was following him because he needed something better for life. He needed an opportunity to rise. There's the Korah generation. The Korah generation is in number 16, 1 to 3. The Korah generation are people that pretend to be with you. But once blessings start, once, once God start lifting you, it's a problem. When people honor you, they are angry. When you get a position of honor, the Korah generation look at Moses and said, why is everybody honoring you? Are you the only one here? And the Bible said that was the first time God gave a mass burial to a group of men. The Korah generation are the generation of people that can't stand to see you lifted. They can't stand you be honored. I'm talking of rebels, the people you should avoid because they will pollute your mentality about God. There's the Ham generation. Ham, H A M. Genesis 9 20 to 24. They get close to you. They get close to your family just to know what you are made of. They want to know secrets about you. They enter you. Where do you stay? Where do you live? They show so much interest because they want to know your nakedness. The Ham generation are those who attack people with their nakedness. They want to know your secrets so they can come against you. There's the, there's the ham generation. There's the Absalom generation. The Absalom generation, they come close to you. They learn everything. You see, there's wickedness even in the church. How can somebody train you in a craft? Train you in a trade? You started as an apprentice. You learned from that person. Learned and you practice for a while. Only to open your shop not too far from that place. Moved all the customers. You are Absalom. I was a resident pastor in a church in 1998 in Lagos called the Armor of God. When the Lord told me to, re to go and pray, a lot of people offered to pay for a hall for me in Lagos. To pay for it all. I said, you, you have been a pastor in Lagos now. Why not pay? I said, I don't understand. The man who I was serving is in Lagos. How can I be in Lagos? Some of you are going to come to my church. They say, yes, we'll follow you. I said, that's where I'm living. I don't want you to follow me. I can't do that to another man. Don't follow me. Hey, even if we don't follow you, I'm not going there. I say, it doesn't matter. But don't follow me. Okay, go to Ibadan. We'll be coming to Ibadan. Ibadan is close to Lagos. I said, no. I want to go and pray. Took our time to pray. And God said, go to your hometown. Go to your hometown. Don't use another man's block to build your house. Some of you don't care the people you hurt. You don't care. Somebody has been a blessing to your life. You don't care. You don't remember the past. You hurt people. People that gave you food. People that gave you transport fare. What is it? Was it not just transport fare you gave me? That day they gave you that tea fare was the day the sun, the ozone layer just burst. The sun opened his eyes. Ready to tear apart your skin. Somebody assisted you. The Absalom generation. They get close to all your contacts. They want to know all your friends. They want to know all your friends so they can penetrate your friends. Some of you have to be careful. People must not know those you know. Protect those you know. I remember a man, he was my friend in this town. There was something he said. That was the, and I told him to his friend, I said, this is the end of our friendship. He said, Apostle, if I'm really your brother, 
you will introduce me to everybody you know. I said, really? See, I said, okay. I saw him off to the gate. When he got to the gate, I said, don't ever enter my house again. Introduce, introducing you to those I know is not a problem. But why are you interested in knowing them? This is why people cannot recommend people anymore. People recommend people. They go there to ridicule them. They go there. They just introduce you to a friend. Less than two days. There's nothing you have not said about your friend. You finished insulted and you feel normal. You feel okay. Somebody loved you so much and said, let me support you. Please, go and meet this person to help you. You went there. There's nothing you didn't say. And you think God is asleep. Anytime you become a conspirator, God fights you. Let me tell you the truth. Anytime you become a conspirator, God hates conspiracy. God does not support. That is why you can sit down and plan against the man. You'll be surprised. It will backfire. Because once you become a conspirator, God turns his back on you. Absalom everywhere. Absalom everywhere. Everywhere. Such a devilish generation. We have people can buy SIM card to insult people and throw away the SIM. To set up people not knowing that there is a God that sees the nakedness of men. Not knowing that Hebrews 4 13 says that all things are open and naked before him. Which will be Absalom. And there is Gehazi. The Gehazi generation is the generation that get close to you and tries to tell the world that you maltreat them. Have you seen people who try to give a picture of the world, paint a picture of you as a wicked person? That's the Gehazi generation. Why did Gehazi run to Naaman? Elisha rejected it. Gehazi went to Naaman to let Naaman know, I am suffering. This man doesn't want to help me. I'm suffering. You see a generation of people. That's why he went there. This man doesn't want to help me. We see a generation of people that are privileged to get close to a worker, a businessman. And they are counting what he has done for them. You see a house help living with madam. Madam, not be only school he trained me. If school was easy, why could not your father train you? If life was easy, oh, what have they given me, self? What has this boss in my office, what has he done for me? I said I was, I was stranded, he just gave me rent. Is that why he's shouting? The rent your biological father could not give you. Somebody did that for you. Look at the way you commonize it at that time. You are a Gehazi. You are a Gehazi. Forget my boss in the office. He has money, but he has done nothing for me. You are a Gehazi. When Gehazi meets your contacts, they will let them know how, how stranded they are. How not cared for. But Gehazi is always end up with leprosy. God always gives them something to battle with. The third generation is the Daotrephes generation. The Gehazi generation is in 2 Kings 5, 20 to 24. The Daotrephes generation is in 2 John 9, verse 10, 9 to 10. 2 John 1, 9 to 10. This is the generation that uses a person to gain influence just to fight him. They use that person to gain acceptance, gain ascendancy. And they turn their back. The Daotrephes generation. Daotrephes. You see it in 2 John 9 and 10. They gain access. And Paul. Daotrephes became blessed through Paul. Became lifted through Paul. Got influence through Paul. And later will come up. When the Daotrephes are speaking. They have compelling stories. That if you don't have the Holy Ghost. They will convince you with their stories. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, they will convince you because they, you will see the stories. So compelling. Those ones are not just liars. They are smooth talkers. Smooth talkers. You have to avoid them. Or else, no matter how genuine you are, wanting to stay with God, they can corrupt your faith. My time is up. Let's be on our faith.
you are going to just pray right now to the Lord restore to me the joy of my salvation hold on hold on restore to me the joy of my salvation oh Lord you are my oh restore to me the joy of my salvation oh Restore to me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Oh Lord, you are my God. Sing it one more time. Restore to me the joy, the joy of my Somebody say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Holy Spirit, I depend on you. I depend on you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I reference you. I reference you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I adore you. I adore you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I love you. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Just pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are right now. Enter solo rakish Rata Hear my cry, O Lord. Hallelujah. Attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto thee? And when my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than now. Yeah, cry, yeah, cry, yeah, cry. cry, Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed. Please lead me. That is higher than night. 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 That is higher 
Hear me, people, begin to live a life of the spirit. If you're in church on Sunday, you, you know a revival has started. And I did tell us, I will never. I made up my mind never to be a, a, a talker. I made up my mind never to live a life without power. I made up my mind never to be in the crop of ministry or ministers who will be tired of just little droplets of unctions. But to walk and have an intercourse and intermingling and mingle with the Holy Ghost to produce results in my generation. So this becomes a vow that the Holy Spirit is the first person you talk to and what? Every day. I told you he's not a human being but a personality. Personality has got mind, has got feeling, has got what? Emotion and will. So you understand the personality of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You will stay. You will stay in Him. You will keep Him perfect peace because your mind is stayed on Him. You walk in power. Amen. In this year of the supernatural, you will see supernatural things. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you have your vows for Sunday for the chair, come forward with them. If you have your vows for Sunday, your vows for Sunday. For Sunday, mm -hmm. I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Oh, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I want. To see my Jesus someday. Goodbye, woes. I stay in the land of you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay in the land of you. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind, I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Cast your cast it on the altar. As adamant is other than flint, so your forehead become harder than that of the enemies as mountains are round about Jerusalem so the Lord will round about you forever as you are making provision for seats in the house your house will not lack anything good in Jesus name Amen Amen get an offering let's just give to the Lord and exalt him on Friday night, the first fire and miracle night of 2022. If you miss it, if you miss it, if you miss it, the first is always important. It's going to be loaded. God has assured me that.